Nebraska. He has been struggling in the league, shooting in the teens from three point range. 17 points per game for Chapman in December. Five points per game in January. As he pulls up and hits his first jumper, a good sign for He Chapman. heard you, Kevin. He's <laughs> the hand. That'd be a little disturbing, Bob, for St. John's that the defense is not creating offense on a run out. As that one rolls home, and Preklo with a fist pump, they got the home rim roll. Scores from deep on this play. Look at the shot clock in the upper part of your screen. Two seconds to go, so he had to let it go. And the iron was very kind to him right here. Touched all. Has he played enough in a Creighton uniform to get that kind of rim, though? That's that's awfully kind of iron. Chapman with good ball movement. Hits the three. Austin Chapman rotating. Inses. Man to man defense by St. John's. Triangle and two is what's been good so far for Creighton. And Milliken knocks one in. Frecklow should be spotting up for the outside shot as Hegner, number 32. 6'10 outside shoot. Chapman getting his way to the rim and really. Good job by St. John's about to get back. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Poor playing by Creighton right there. They had an opportunity and they made some passes that were unnecessary. Crackwell though makes him forget all that. Uh, when Steve Lavin said we want to push it and take those early shots, that's an example. Pointer is listening to his coach. Hegner will try from deep. And he hits. Toby Hegner shoots. Branch gets all the way to the rim. And the rebound for the Blue Jays and Avery Dingman. Chapman, the Jays up one, driving inside, the floater goes, Austin Chapman with nine first half points. Yeah, no doubt about it, I mean, he's never going to be in double figures much for his team, but uh, I like this, I like this. I... Jays are five of their last nine from behind the arc. For a team that struggled mightily, they're going to keep shooting and keep hitting. Take mine. And off the bench tonight with nine in the first half. Here he is again, launching and hitting four for four. And then they just couldn't score. Duke, Duke notched up the pressure. Right here, it's a different style of defense. Brooks against Obekba, dishing to Dingman. And now the Jays want to push. Milliken. St. John's get back and reorganize quickly. They did. You got to credit that. I thought Milliken was going to shoot that. He'll shoot this. And why not? First half, they've hit nine. Timeout taken by St. John's. The Jays up by 11, their largest lead of this first half, and it's come via the long range jumper. He's usually not much of a scorer getting involved right away here. Egner. And Milliken back on the floor for the Blue Jays, who started 0 for 4 in the second half. Right before this second half began, St. John's late out of the locker room. Really didn't have a whole lot of time to warm up. They came out with two minutes remaining at halftime. Good ball movement, but not even close to them defensively. Creighton got a little bit overconfident with the offense and stopped paying attention to their deep. Oh, what an answer! Dingman with the three and a five. To start this second half, hit their second bucket of the second half, a big three, and now sweet. with the timeout, Kreklo with the two. Oh, that is sweet. Got about that. And you don't mind him running. No, I like him running. I think it adds a dimension to this team that they need. A nice pass inside, and three was that cancel. And half made. At halftime, I think Steve Lavin emphasized that particular aspect, don't you? Oh, Milliken on the drive with a little English. He'll go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Good thing you didn't take him out when he got his third, right? Coach McDermott knows what he's doing. The lefty drive, the hesitation move is what got him there. And of course, Obekba had an opportunity, but there was a, one of his guys was between him and the ball. See that? Dingman trying baseline with the pull up. And Avery Dingman, known for his defense, providing some offense. He's seen in the lane. Two point lead for St. John's. Hagner trying to turn that around. Had a little more rhythm on that one. Didn't rush it. Yeah. And that when you wonder about how much time is spent on inbound plays underneath, that's why Brooks on the drive. And hits it with the follow. The 11th tie of this ball game. 
something about St. John's and Creighton in this building. Create late game. Lock now to Brooks in the front court with 14. Outside to Austin Chapman, fakes a pants into the corner. Milliken for three, and the lead! Okay, Milliken. Milliken. 65, 62, 309 to go, and everybody is standing at CenturyLink Center Omaha. Here's Branch between the circles, outside for Harrison. Harrison tries to come off the screen, looks to go through the paint, denied! Oh, and they're going to call the foul! Oh, dead gum game long! These officials have allowed that play to continue, and then they call the foul on Hanson. Wow, come on. I cannot believe that. Zach Hanson couldn't have played that ball any better. Should have been a jump ball call. He tied up Harrison on his shot attempt. They got called for swiping down at the ball. Come on, ref, wake up! 2.56 to go, and the fans angry, and they deserve to be. And a steal. Brooks, no. long pass ahead. Dingman trying to save it, but he does to Ali Megovic. They got a pass now. They got an opportunity right here. Three on two. Harrison for three. Oh, what a bucket. Wow. 18 on the shot clock. A minute 20 left in the game. Milliken still in the dribble. Milliken starts his attack, takes it up strong. Should have been a goal tap, no call. But Hager comes away with the board. Still no time. Hager caught underneath into the corner. Milliken three. Boom! Oh, baby! James Milliken fails off the chain. It's 71 to 67. Oh, Millie with a minute to go. The scramble at the other end was unbelievable to watch, wasn't it? Hager had nowhere to go with this basketball. He pivots once, he pivots twice. Stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. Finally, he gets the ball to the corner. <laughs> unbelievable, look at the bench. Oh, you gotta love college basketball. Milliken was ready, wasn't he? He was faking the foul, too. He wanted the corner. <laughs> Under 20 to play. Goodness. Are you kidding me? He was trying to try to keep him out. Now Hegner at the line, an 85% free throw shooter. His first attempts tonight. Thank you. And Hegner with a look right at the last second at the rim. Notice that? Interesting. But you do the same thing every time. Three point game. Got to go three here. Eight seconds for Green. Right guy, Harrison. There was contact. Three seconds. The long two is good. They have no timeouts. They have no timeouts with 2.1 seconds remaining. Dingman into Hegner, fouled with 1.3. What a game. Toby Hegner, 20 points tonight for Creighton. Ain't over yet, you can still throw long. You can catch with 1.3 and still shoot the basketball. Martino is gonna go in probably to guard the inbound pass if this free throw is made because he's 6'11". There a better poster for Big East basketball than that right there? <laughs> Dripping in sweat, a little blood on the cheek. Toby Hegner. Hegner toes the line, pauses, looks up at the basket, shoots, scores, 77-74. Now, Hegner out, Artino in, and this is it. What will the Jays do here on defense? They'll stay back in the backcourt, but they will guard the inbound. Chapman back there to get it in, Obetka, Obetka up to Harrison, Harrison up, and it is no good! Jays win! Jays win! Jays win! The losing streak is over, and finally Harrison misses, but it wasn't by much. They've finally done it! A win in January! The Great Blue Jays, 77! St. John's, 74! Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow! Nothing worthwhile comes with ease. <laughs>